Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if you can melt wood. And I'd like to thank the online video learning service, The Great Courses Plus, for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them at the end of my video. So every single substance in the world actually does have a melting point. The only problem is most substances melting point is far above the temperature at which something spontaneously combusts. And that happens to be the case with wood. So wood has cellulose and lignin in it and a lot of other materials. And all of those materials are really big molecules. And really big molecules usually have higher melting points. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this wood in my vacuum chamber and then I'm going to shine my super bright laser on it to get it over its auto ignition temperature and see if it actually melts. So I've actually had a lot of requests to do this. A lot of people asking if you heat up wood in a vacuum, would it actually melt? So let me know in the comments section what your predictions are. Do you think the wood will actually melt when there's no oxygen around it? Okay, attempting to melt wood in a vacuum. Three, two, one. <laughs> Okay, we're at 0.6 atmospheres and half an atmosphere in there now. Almost our full vacuum with this pump. Okay, let's see if we can melt it. Three, two, one. Well, that's cool. You can see the smoke just falling off of it. It's not floating. So it looks like it's just becoming charcoal-like. You can see the smoke just falling off of it. So let me try to get the very corner. If it really is melting, we should be able to see something there. Okay, let's let the air back in and see if we see any indication that it actually melted. Three, two, one. Okay, so it mostly charred, but look around the edges here. There's an oily substance around it. So this brown oily stuff around it is something called pyroligneous acid. And then the very dark stuff that you see is tar. In fact, you don't need a vacuum chamber to collect this tar or all of those other products. So it's gonna be burning, but the initial oxygen will get used up so that there's no more oxygen left. So from then on, there's not gonna be any burning, but what's actually gonna be happening is it's gonna be pyrolyzing. And that means that the big, huge cellulose and lignin molecules are gonna start breaking down into smaller molecules. And we're going to be capturing those chemicals in this jar here. So I'll have this jar in water. It's gonna be condensing all of the smoke that comes off of this. Okay, let's put our wood in. Okay, you can see it's starting to smoke in there. Okay, let's try a little bit more wood with a shorter tube. So you can see a lot of liquids forming at the top right there. So that right there is the broken down cellulose and lignin. So you can see the liquid components coming off of the wood here but what you don't see is the gaseous components. So there's hydrogen, carbon monoxide, methane, even CO2 coming off of this. And these are the gases that are actually burning when you see wood burning. If you've ever looked at wood burning really close, you'll notice that the flame isn't actually on the wood, but it's above the wood. That's because what's actually happening is you're heating the wood up high enough so that it breaks down into these gaseous components, and those gases are what catch on fire on top of the wood. There is a type of combustion that actually does happen on the surface and that's called smoldering. So smoldering is when the oxygen directly reacts with the surface of the material. 
So that's why if you've ever looked at a fire closely, you kind of see two things happening. You see some bright red coals burning and then you see fire above it. So the fire above it is burning the gases coming from the material and the smoldering is actually burning the surface of the material. So all the liquid that collected in my tube and everything was liquid that condensed at a higher temperature. But in my glass here, here's the lower temperature flammable fluid. And this has a very, this has a very strong smell to it. So this right here is as close as you're gonna get to liquid wood. This literally is the wood, but it's not melted wood per se. It's basically broken down wood that wasn't burned. So basically what this means is that no matter what you do, you cannot melt wood. The reason is because in oxygen, it just starts on fire. In non-oxygen environment, it breaks down on its own. And so when molecules get too big and too long, you have to provide so much heat to melt them that they just break down spontaneously into smaller molecules. That's the same reason why you can't melt rubber. So rubber is such a big molecule. In fact, it's actually just one big molecule. So once rubber has been vulcanized, it's one big solid molecule. So as you can imagine, there's no melting point of rubber. But what happens instead when you light it on fire is that it looks like it melts, but what's really happening is just you're breaking down the huge components of vulcanized rubber into smaller molecules, just like we did with the wood there. Again, a big thank you to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this video. At this time, they're giving everybody a free trial to their streaming service. So head over to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash the action lab for your free trial today. So The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand video learning service with top-notch lectures and courses from top professors from the Ivy League and other great universities, and especially experts from places like the National Geographic, the Smithsonian, and even the Culinary Institute of America. For example, our video here was on combustion. If you want to learn about combustion, just go to this lecture. From this lecture, I even learned about the history of the biggest non-nuclear explosion that's ever happened but you can also learn some other cool things like chemical reactions and everything. So you will get unlimited access to a huge library of over 10,000 video lectures about anything that interests you, like science, math, even history, literature, or even how to cook, play chess, or become a better photographer. So to support the Action Lab, just click the link in my description or type in the Great Courses Plus slash the Action Lab and head over to their websites for some great online learning material. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it and you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and leave me any comments or questions that you have in the comments section and I'll see you next time.